And James was uh, actually, well, different conversation, but um, last week you had the RAV4, but you did not have a chance to drive it around before you yeah. talked to us. Now you had a week to drive it and you actually enjoyed it very much. Yeah, no, I actually, I thought, for example, Tara, for you, if you were able to put the, the surfboards in the back when they're a bit damp and don't mind that too much, mm -hmm. it was a great car. Nice. Um, it was very fast in a straight line at 302 horsepower. Um, it gave you 40 miles of plug-in electric uh, driving around town, which is very seamless and quiet. Most of the driving I did was always under electric power. Mm -hmm. The only time I went for a long road trip where I put 100 plus miles on the car for one day out uh, was when I was really driving on the electric, on the both hybrid sort of setup. And it was really good. It was very nice and comfortable on the inside. Uh, it didn't have the best handling, one might say, but I'm not expecting a Toyota RAV4 it's to SUV. have it's a, it's the best SUV. handling. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a bit bouncy, but it was nice going over the curves. You don't mind it too much, or the road humps, I should say. And it was nice, but what was there was only two small detracting factors, I would say, to the car. One that I found already owning an electric vehicle is that when I plug the unit into charge into the RAV4, it had locked. And so I'd have to always remember that I had my keys with me to unlock it so I could unplug it out. Otherwise, it was a bit of a pain of having to remember that. And then the other thing that I found really annoying, more so than anything else, was when you put it in reverse and it was driving obviously under electric power, it would have to emit a sound to everyone outside to let them know that you were there so you wouldn't run them over. And, is, does oh, that, is that coming from like, it, it's an, a, it's a intentional sound, right? Yes. To let everybody around you know. Yes, that you're you're going, yes. Yeah. But I, to be mere, fair for me, I think it's your own fault if you get run over by an electric car going in reverse. You should what, really be paying more attention and not what looking kind down of sound, at your phone or what looking kind of sound down at your keyboard like Sam is doing now. Nope. You're horrible. <laughs> what kind See? of, what kind of sound does it make when you're- I was when looking you're... for the sound uh, that it makes. Oh, answer. it's it's it in the interior. It's like a, an eco sound. The dash is all green. It's like feels like soothing, like rainwater esque. Outside, it just sounds like a howling banshee, and it's very distressing. And you have to like be like it's very piercing on the ears. I have to go back inside. So that wasn't so great. But in regards to the positives of the car, obviously it's one really good because you get in the forty miles of range. So you could drive to and from work just charging it and having it there as a as the regular hybrid car on the weekend so you can go those five six hundred miles if you need to but you've got the 40 mile day today um, a lot of space in the car we made a trip to uh, ikea in it to get some stuff easily fit it all in no problems at all and you never left great. you never left you're still in ikea right exactly now, right? i'm still right here in IKEA. <laughs> still doing the oh is that one of the uh, display rooms there cool it is it is so i mean i i liked it, it was very comfortable um I think the comfort level is almost the case of Lexus. Um, it comes in wow. around $40,000 for the price, but then you get $7,500 back with the uh, electric vehicle with credits. So mm -hmm. that drops the price down to a much more reasonable 33, um, which is at a price of say a higher stacked like a uh, hybrid version. So I think that the, the Prime is a much better buy. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it's so well, I think you're on a waiting list to get them. Um, wow. I think they're selling ten thousand dollars over sticker price if you walk into a dealership to try and buy Ooh. one now which is usually what you talk about like supercars in regards to just a toyota rav4 um they're gonna easily sell out the five thousand units they're moving this year they're expecting to make twenty thousand next year i think they should make more because they will sell more um so i i gave it a resounding thumbs up i'd say this is a car that you want to look at for around thirty to forty thousand for anyone that's buying a new car it's good for easy access, easy egress for kids, old people, lots of room. It's electric. It's hybrid. It's got a petrol engine as well. It's good. All around good car. Okay. Good review. Nice. Oh, I try and make it nice and easy. All right. Tara, what have you got for us? 156 units sold in 2020. RAV4. 156. End of thousand. February though. Yeah. 156,000. Yeah. But that's, yeah. this is like, yeah earlier this year yeah, yeah they're making a they're making a killing on with that and the rav4 is the biggest selling unit for toyota yeah yeah it's past camry and everything yeah and the other the other humorous thing is is that the rav4 prime is actually faster than 60 miles an hour than the toyota camry trd their special edition 
Wow, really? racing car. Yes, yes. So the only car quicker than it to sixty is the Toyota Supra. Damn. Yeah, that's impressive. 